Hi guys, it's me again. Teacher William. In our previous video, we learned how universe originate, based on the different hypotheses or theories, such as, the Big Bang through colossal explosion, the creation myth, which is God created the whole universe, the steady state, in which, the universe is unchanging in time and uniform in space, and the pulsating universe, which the universe formed from the combination of Big Bang and the Big Crunch. Our topic for today is the continuation of the lesson in astronomy, entitled, The Origin of the Solar System. Well, the solar system is made up of the sun being the center, and everything that orbits around it, including planets, moons, asteroids, comets and meteoroids. Our main objective today is that, we are going to describe the different theories, explaining the origin of the solar system. With my colleagues, let us explore the different hypotheses explaining the origin of the solar system. In the origin of the universe, there was an era which is the matter era, when stars and galaxies began to form. A galaxy is defined as gravitationally bound system of stars, stellar remnants, interstellar gas, and dark matter. Milky Way, is one of the billion galaxies in the observable universe. The observable universe is a spherical region of the universe comprising all matter that can be observed from Earth or its space-based telescopes and exploratory probes at the present time, because the electromagnetic radiation from these objects has had time to reach the solar system and Earth since the beginning of the cosmological expansion. So here are the theories explaining the origin of the solar system. We have number 1, the Descartes Vortex Theory. Number 2, the Buffon's Collision Theory. 3, the Kant Laplace Nebular Theory. 4, the Jeans Jeffries Tidal Theory. And lastly, the Solar Nebular Theory. Let us explore on these five theories. The Descartes Vortex Theory. The Descartes Vortex Theory was proposed by a French mathematician and physicist named René Descartes. According, to his model, the solar system was formed into bodies with nearly circular orbits because of the whirlpool-like motion in the pre-solar materials. This is an example of the Descartes Vortex Theory. In this video, Descartes explained the orbits of the planets are the primarily whirlpool motion and the satellites as the secondary whirlpool motion. And according to him, there should be a guiding hand by the creator, to make the vortex continuously set in motion and return bodies in the vortex to their proper orbits. The Buffon's Collision Theory The Buffon's Collision Theory was proposed in 1749 by a French naturalist, mathematician, and cosmologist named Georges-Louis Leclerc, Comte de Buffon. According to his theory, planets were formed by the collision of the Sun and a giant comet. The resulting debris formed into planets that rotate in the same direction as they revolved around the Sun. In the picture, it shows that the giant comet collide with the Sun. Buffon proposed that the debris flung out from a comet's collision with the Sun became the planets. Now, let's have the Jeans Jeffries Tidal Theory. The tidal theory of the origin of the solar system was proposed by Sir James H. Jeans and Sir Harold Jeffries. The two proponents suggested a dualistic theory in which the Sun and planets were produced in different mechanisms. Their known theory is called tidal theory. The tidal theory proposed that the planets were formed from the substance that was torn out from the Sun. As a speeding massive star passed near the Sun, it pulled off material due to gravitational attraction. The torn off material subsequently condensed to form planets. The Kant Laplace Nebular Theory. According to Encyclopedia 2 TheFreeDictionary.com, a theory for the origin of the solar system put forward by the French mathematician Pierre Simon de Laplace in 1796 and similar to a suggestion of the philosopher Immanuel Kant in 1755. It was proposed that the solar system includes the Sun, and other planets were formed from a great rotating cloud, or nebula, of material, gas and dust, collapsing under its own gravitational attraction. 
An interaction of forces caused the cloud to form a rotating flattened disk, called the solar nebula. To conserve angular momentum, the disk rotated more rapidly as the contraction progressed. Laplace suggested that rings of material became detached from the spinning disk when the velocity at its edge exceeded a critical value, and that the material in these rings later coalesced to form the planets. The central product of the contraction is the Sun, while the planetary satellites may have formed from further rings shed by the condensing planets. The hypothesis, popular throughout the 19th century, went out of favor. The main problem was that it indicated that the Sun should still be spinning on the verge of rotational instability, it could not explain why the Sun has almost 99.9% .9 of the mass of the solar system but only about 2% of the total angular momentum. In addition, calculations showed that the rings would not condense to form planets. However, in a modified form, it is the basis of most modern ideas for the formation of the Sun and planets. And finally, let's have the solar nebular theory. The main concern of the solar nebular theory SNT, is to solve the original problems of Kant and Laplace's nebular hypothesis about angular momentum of the Sun. The redistribution of the angular momentum has been central in the development of SNT. According to this theory, the solar system was formed as a result of the condensation of the hydrogen gas and dust referred to as instellar gas and dust cloud. Something must have hydrogen to trigger the condensation of the gas and dust cloud. An explosion of the star supernova, might have been caused the dust and gas cloud to collapse, forming the sun and planets. Without the violent disturbance, the gas and dust cloud would remain an expanded and uncondensed cloud. The gas and dust cloud collapsed due to the force of the gravity. The center compressed enough to become a protostar, leaving the outer material suspended around the center. As the cloud continues to shrink, its rotational speed increases and becomes a rapidly rotating disk. The contraction converts gravitational energy into heat energy, and causes the center to glow. When the temperature is sufficient enough, a nuclear reaction begins at the core of the protostar and later becomes the sun. The remaining gas and dust cloud form a disk-shaped bodies due to rotation called solar nebulae. According to the SNT, the formation of the planets involves different stages, in contrast to the single process of nebular theory. The first stage is the accretion of grain-sized particles to form centimeter-sized particles which would later grow to several kilometers in diameter. The second stage involves the formation of more massive objects from coalescing planetesimals. The massive objects are referred to as protoplanets. These would later become the planets. After the formation of the solar system, it was speculated that after one million years, it generated a very strong solar wind. This swept away all of the gases left in the protoplanetary nebulae. As the protoplanet became large enough, its gravity pulled in the nebular gas. This resulted in the formation of gas giants. Otherwise, the protoplanet would remain a rocky or icy body. Finally, the solar system is composed of only solid, protoplanetary bodies and gas giants. Eventually, after millions of years, the solar system ended up with the planets that had stable orbits.